So this is the Dell XPS 13 with the new 3.5K OLED display, which is going to ruin a lot of the laptops that I'll be reviewing in the future because this screen is so good. I've been using it for two months now. Let's take a look. The star of the show is the display, but we'll get to that in a bit. Let's talk about the design first. First thing you notice when you take it out of the box is its premium build quality. It's made of machined aluminum, carbon fiber, and Corning Gorilla Glass. If you're getting this laptop, I definitely recommend getting the white one. It's light at just about 2.8 pounds, and because of the size and weight of this laptop, the XPS 13 is great for those going to school or commuting to the office. I've been told that laptops with lids that can be opened with one hand means high quality hinge. Let's try on the XPS 13. So here's the 13.4 inch 3.5K Infinity Edge OLED touch display. This is great for media consumption because images pop with saturation and contrast. It's also surprisingly good against bright windows and outdoors because it has some anti-reflectiveness. You can change the display colors with Dolby Access app and optimize it for bright, dark, or vibrant colors. While this is great for consumption, I'm a little concerned for photo or video editors. There's no shortcut to quickly change the color profile for sRGB or Adobe RGB for those who want more accuracy. I don't think this laptop is targeted for that audience, but I think a toolbar setting to quickly change the color profile would have been nice. The display is surrounded by minimal bezels, but they still manage to fit a front-facing camera with Windows Hello Face Unlock. Camera is 720p and a 1080p would have been better, but it's good enough for video calls. The left side of the XPS 13 has a Thunderbolt 4 port and a micro SD slot. I don't have or use a micro SD card, so not a fan of that. Would have preferred a full SD card reader or maybe another Thunderbolt 4 or USB-C port instead. On the right side, there's the audio jack and another Thunderbolt 4 port. You use one of these Thunderbolt 4 ports for the power adapter. For a tiny laptop, I thought there would be major drawbacks with the keyboard, but I was wrong. The key size is normal and I don't feel cramped when typing. The key travel does feel a little shallow, but I can still comfortably type on it. On the top right corner is the power button and it has a built-in fingerprint scanner. I prefer to use face unlock, but it's there as an option. The speakers are on the bottom left and right sides of the XPS 13 and they sound great out of the box. They're loud, sound clear, and have plenty of bass for those high action explosive movies. Like I said, they sound great out of the box, but you can use the pre-installed Max Audio Pro app to tinker with the audio settings. The XPS 13 came with Windows 10 Home and there were a bunch of pre-installed apps. One of the first things I did was uninstall McAfee Antivirus since I'm more than happy with the built-in Windows 10 security. I would also sometimes get pop-ups for Dropbox, which I wasn't happy about. You can uninstall that as well. There's a lot of Dell apps here that can get overwhelming, but most important for me is the Dell Update app, which checks for firmware updates. I think Dell also knows that they have a lot of pre-installed apps because they have this one app that brings them all together. It's called My Dell, which is pretty much a one-stop shop for everything related to your machine. It links out to various apps depending on your needs, whether it's display settings, audio settings, firmware updates, and more. When it comes to specifications, you can get up to 11th gen Intel Core i7 processor, up to 32 gigs RAM, up to two terabytes SSD, and the integrated Intel Iris XA graphics. Price starts from about $900 and can go much higher depending on the specifications you choose. This laptop as configured costs about $1,600. Dell usually has coupons and sales, so keep checking. I'll include a link in the video description. So just like the other laptops I've reviewed on this channel with the 11th gen Intel processor, I'm pretty happy with the performance, office tasks, browsing the web, watching videos, all work as expected. Editing videos work well too. I can edit full HD videos in Premiere without lag. So exporting a 10 minute full HD video to 4K for YouTube takes 12 and a half minutes, which is pretty good for a portable thin and light laptop. 
Of course, it's not as fast as a laptop with a dedicated GPU. For example, the same file on the Surface Book 3 15 inch takes just about six minutes. If you're a YouTuber who edits videos several times a week, this probably isn't a laptop you're in the market for, but if you're someone who edits once in a while, waiting a few more minutes to export, well, having a very portable laptop is a very good trade-off. Let's talk about battery life. I'm usually plugged in when I'm on my desk, but when I unplug, the battery meter shows about six hours. You'll probably get longer battery with the full HD display option, but I prefer sharper images with higher res displays. So that's the Dell XPS 13. It's an incredible laptop with now an OLED display option. I mentioned the pros and cons in laptop reviews, and honestly, there's not a lot of things that I hate about this laptop. The design, size, and weight of this 13-inch laptop combined with solid performance and now with this OLED display makes this very easy to recommend. Last week, I received another laptop to review. It has a 1080p display and it's not OLED, and right away, I wasn't excited to review it because the display on this XPS 13 is just so good. All right, so let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the XPS 13. I'll respond right away. If I don't know the answer, I'll find someone who can. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. I'm Mark, thanks for watching.